All right, let's get to it. The exciting conclusion. Last time we asked ourselves, hey, will a constant multiple dramatically impact the way that we take derivatives, or can we just sort of extend the power rule to um, account for constant multiples the way that we want them to? We're going to start off with this theorem right here. It says if f of x equals k times g of x, where k is some constant multiple here, then f prime of x is equal to k, my constant multiple, times g prime of x. And essentially what this theorem is telling us is that constant multiples will not have a dramatic I impact on our problem. In other words, uh, we can extend the power rule to account for them, and it, it extends in sort of the way that you would expect it to. So to, to look at a few examples here, if I were to take the derivative here, I have f of x equals 5x cubed. This is the function we left off with in the last video. If I were to take the derivative f prime of x, here's my constant multiple of 5. So this says, you know what, that 5 really just comes down in the next uh, in the derivative. But then I take that constant multiple and I multiply it by the derivative of g prime of x. And here g prime of x is x cubed. So I need to multiply that by the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. And then of course I can multiply 5 times 3. This is 15x squared. If you want you can jump straight down to this last step, and I expect most of us will. Um, this middle step right here is not work that I need to see every single time, but it is good to keep that in the back of your mind. Um, I think a lot of students lose track of this and then uh, run into problems later on in the course because of it. Um, just keep it in the back of your mind that this is what we're really doing when we take a derivative here um, with a constant multiple. So let's continue on. Here I would like to find dy dt for the function y equals t to the fourth over 12. And here it might help to rewrite this so that the constant multiple is a little bit easier to see. Here, t, um, this really says 1 12th times t to the fourth. And then when I go and take the derivative, dy dt is equal to 1 12th times the derivative of t to the fourth. Well, that would be 4t cubed. And then after that, we can write that as a single fraction. Maybe we'll write that as 4t cubed over 12. And then, of course, we can reduce that fraction. That would be t cubed over 3. And there is my derivative. One thing I'll draw your attention to in this problem is notice I didn't necessarily have to write it out as a constant multiple times t to the fourth. If your variable lives in your numerator as our t does here, you could have just taken the derivative of that numerator, which would be 4t to the third divided by 12, and that is exactly what we've got right here. So we would have ended up with the same conclusion. So if you have a fraction, if you have your variable in the numerator, in the top part of your fraction, you can just go ahead and take the derivative of that. The denominator is just going to stay exactly the same. All right, what else do we have? We have uh, y prime equal, or excuse me, we want to find y prime for y equals 1 over 3x cubed. Here we have our variable in the denominator this time. So this time we do have to go ahead and rewrite this. So this is going to look like 1 third. And actually here, let's write it this way. Let's write this as x to the minus 3. Now this 3 right here, I, I don't care if it's in the denominator or, or not. And, and quite frankly, it's probably easier if we do leave that in the denominator. So I'm going to write this as x to the minus 3 over 3 power. Alternatively, you could say 1 third times x to the negative 3 if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to do the problem this way. So when I go to take the derivative y prime, I multiply, or I, excuse me, I take the derivative of my numerator, so I multiply by my power. Negative 3x subtract 1 from my power. Again, just be very careful with your negative signs. My new power is negative 4 after I subtract 1 divided by 3. 
And of course, we can cancel our common factor of 3 in our numerator and our denominator. Oops. So this ends up looking like negative x to the fourth, just negative x to the fourth. Oops, negative x to the, almost forgot, the negative fourth power. So don't lose sight of that negative sign. We can leave our answer like this, or if you want to, we could write that as negative 1 all over x to the fourth and make our exponent positive. Again, I just think that this way, this form right here is easier to use algebraically and, and we're going to be doing a lot of algebra with our derivatives in the coming sections. So for our last example here, I want to take the derivative of 0 0.9 over uh, this says the cubed root of x. I know it might be a little bit hard to read, but this says take the derivative of 0 0.9 over the cubed root of x. And here we see that x in the denominator, so that tells me, yes, I am going to have to rewrite this, uh, this x, and I'm actually going to have to use both of my exponent rules here. So first I'm going to rewrite this as 0 0.9 divided by x to the 1 3rd power and that's fine. And now I need to bring that up to the numerator and rewrite it with a negative exponent. So this really says, oops, let's do this. This really says, uh, take the derivative of 0 0.9 x to the negative 1 third power. So okay, we will multiply by our power. So 0 0.9 times negative 1 third. I'm just gonna take my time here since this is a pretty complicated looking function to me. 0 0.9 times negative 1 third x subtract 1 from my power. It's really 3 over 3 so I'm subtracting 3 over 3 becomes negative 4 over 3. And then of course I can multiply this out. I could say this is negative 0 0.3 x to the negative 4 thirds. You could leave your answer like that. Or say negative 0 0.3 all over x raised to the 4 thirds power if you prefer that positive exponent like I do. So either one of those would be perfectly fine for your derivative. And that's not where the nice properties end for the derivative. Next up, we've got another theorem. It says if y equals f of x plus or minus g of x, then y prime equals f prime of x plus or minus g prime of x. So essentially what this says is that the derivative will kind of distribute, again, for lack of a better word, over addition and subtraction here. It distributes over addition and subtraction. I'm going to make sure I emphasize here that this is not, it is not the case for multiplication and division. So that's kind of where the really nice properties end. We are going to have to approach those problems just a little bit differently. And, and we'll talk about how to deal with those in the next chapter. But for right now, um, we can distribute derivatives over addition and subtraction, which makes dealing with polynomials really nicely. Nice, excuse me, very nice. So if I want to find f prime of x for f of x equals 3x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 7, I can just kind of work my way down this polynomial and take the derivative of each term separately. So first I'm going to say, well, let's take the derivative of uh, 3x to the fourth. Well, that would be 12x to the third power. Well, very cool minus, well, what's the derivative of negative 2x cubed? The derivative of negative 2x cubed here should be negative 6x squared. Oops, I already had my negative. Let me fix that. Minus 6x squared. Keep working our way down the line here. Plus the derivative of x squared. Derivative of x squared, that will be 2x minus derivative of 5x. This one might be a little bit tricky, but remember this is negative 5 times x to the first power. When I take the derivative of this, if I was to take the derivative of this guy, this would be negative 5 times 1 or just negative 5. So the derivative of negative 5x simply becomes negative 5 
derivative of 7, this one also might be a little bit tricky, but remember that 7 is just a constant. Derivative of any constant is 0. Now, I don't need to see that plus 0 here. I just wanted to, for this very first one, show kind of what happens here. If you don't write that, oops, I, want, I need the negative 5, but if you don't want to write the plus 0, that's perfectly fine. This is my derivative here. So I just kind of work my way down the line exactly the way you would like to. Part B, I have y equals 3 minus 7x to the minus 2. Again, I can just take the derivative of each of these terms separately. So y prime, derivative of 3 again is going to be 0, so I'm not even going to write anything there. Here I'm going to multiply by my power, so negative 7 times negative 2. I should have a positive 14x, and then we'll subtract 1 from my power. I should have minus 3. Again, you could leave your answer like this, or if you wanted to, we could rewrite that as 14 over x to the third if you prefer that positive exponent. Oops. Either one of those is fine. Next, I have I want to find dy dt for y equals 5t cubed minus the fourth root of t. So here, this guy in particular is going to be a little bit more troublesome. I need to rewrite that so that it has a rational exponent. So we're going to rewrite this. y equals 5t cubed minus t to the 1 fourth power. Now, I'm going to mention a few things here. Again, keep in mind at this stage right here, we have not yet taken the derivative. Notice I wrote y here. I didn't write dy dt. I didn't write y prime. This is still just the derivative. Or excuse me, this is still just the original function. So I still need to take the derivative, which means I still need to apply my power rule. So the way I'm going to do that here is well, y prime multiply by my power 15x squared excuse me, 15t squared, 15t squared minus multiply by my power, 1 fourth times t, subtract 1 from my power. Uh, what would that be? That would be negative 3 fourths is my new power. Could leave your answer like that. Or if you prefer that positive exponent, 15t squared minus 1 over 4t to the 3 fourths power. Either one of those is fine. One other thing in this problem that I'd really like to draw attention to, notice that from the way the problem was initially written, and let me change my color to kind of highlight this, the way the problem was initially written, I took one whole step just to rewrite this part right here, and I would highly, highly, highly discourage you from jumping straight into this part right here and saying, well, you know what, that should look like 15t squared. And the reason I say that is because then you're in a situation where here you have not taken, or excuse me, here you have taken the derivative, but over here you just rewrote the expression. It makes it even harder then to remember what have you taken the derivative of, what haven't you taken the derivative of. You don't have really the derivative or the original function. You have this kind of weird mishmash of both. So I would strongly recommend waiting until you have everything rewritten before you take the derivative of every single one of those terms so that you know, okay, this is the derivative. I don't need to worry about any specific terms. I've done everything all at the same time. Otherwise, I find that it's very, very easy to lose track of what you have taken the derivative of and what you haven't. Lastly here, uh, I want to take the derivative of negative 3 over 4x plus 4 over x cubed minus x to the fourth over 8. Again, these two terms, I've got that power of x in the denominator, which means I'm going to have to rewrite them. So this says take the derivative of negative 3. Let's write this here. Let's say negative 3x to the negative 1 power over 4 plus 4x to the negative 3 power. Here I already have x in my numerator, so I don't need to do anything there. Minus x to the fourth over 8. And notice, even though I don't have to rewrite this guy, I haven't yet taken the derivative because I wanted to take a whole step to rewrite this term and this term. 
But now I have rewritten those, so I should be able to go ahead and take the derivative without any issues. So for this first term, I'm going to multiply by negative 1, makes my coefficient positive 3 fourths, and I subtract 1 from my power. Uh, my new power is negative 2. Plus over here, 4 times negative 3, I've got negative 12x. We'll subtract 1 from my power. I have negative 4 as my new power. Minus over there, let's, I don't want to worry too much about simplifying everything quite yet. Um, derivative of x to the fourth, though, I know that's 4x cubed all over 8. I'm going to take a step and rewrite these with positive exponents, and I also am going to simplify this fraction over here. So if I wanted to rewrite these with positive exponents, it looks like 3 over 4x squared minus... 12 all over x to the fourth minus over here if I want to simplify that fraction it looks like x cubed over 2 and that is my final answer so please 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 be very careful about when you're rewriting and about when you take the derivative I would practice a lot of these because this is um, something that we need to be able to do very very well in the sections going forward um, we're going to be using the power rule literally in almost every section going forward so um, please 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 make sure that you get some practice with it and we'll talk some more about some properties of derivatives in the next video